Can I delete the folder C colon backslash program data backslash package cache backslash? There is a new folder full of installers located at C column backslash program data backslash package cache backslash. I believe this is from Visual Studio 2012 RC. Can I delete these gigabytes of data without consequences? Are they all temporary files? It's a beta product so I'm not sure there is much information out there about this folder. TL, Doctor, do not delete this folder. See below for workarounds. Why not? There have been conflicting reports about whether the absence of this folder, as a consequence of deleting it, will actually and in all cases cause issues with the Visual Studio installation, i.e. during normal operation, during reinstall, patch slash upgrade, repair install, or uninstall. However, the recommendation from Microsoft is clearly to not delete it. From Microsoft Developer Tools blogs here. When repairing, modifying, or uninstalling a product or when installing or uninstalling a patch, if source media is required the package cache is used automatically and most users will never see a prompt. Only if the package cache is missing or incomplete will Visual Studio set up prompts to download, if connected, or locate media as found in the screenshot below. Users who have installed from media even get the option to download if connected. So while very few customers should ever see this dialogue, we wanted to make sure the experience was easy. Even though we will prompt to download packages to the cache if missing, we recommend users do not remove the package cache. Not only is the cache used by many other products that are installed with Burn and may not provide the same download experience, there are scenarios when Windows installer may require source that we cannot handle because our code is not running. Hashtag solution slash workaround colon hash. If you need to reclaim this space, your safest bet is to avoid deleting anything, but to instead, move this folder and all its files. You can safely do this following the instructions below to any local slash live online, near line, or offline storage as long as that storage system that can be mounted to a drive letter or any mount point on the NTFS file system. Any of the following will work. Another live, mounted, partition. An optical disc, CD, DVD, etc., with a live file system like FAT, or NTFS. An external hard drive. A USB drive. A network drive. Whenever you are prompted for the media slash receive any errors about missing files slash missing location, you simply make sure to remount slash reinsert your drive slash media if it's not already a live partition. Once moved, in order to link the old mount point slash location, in most cases see column backslash program data backslash package cache backslash, you simply create a directory junction to it. Junctions are recognized at the file system level as an alias entry in the staff. Therefore, it's transparent to all programs, including the OS itself. In other words, it is not seen as a file that simply points to another location, like a shortcut, and therefore always works without incident. You would move the folders in question to its new location. Create the junction. Option 1. Natively, just issue the built-in Windows Vista, 7, a command and the CMD prompt. Note, if you make the new path absolute, you'll be able to move link without breaking the pointer to the new path. If you make the new path relative, you'll be able prevent breaking the link, 
as long as you move both the link and target together and maintain their relative paths. Option 2. Using a tool, another great alternative is a free handy utility I've been using for years called Link Shell Extension. Wils is free and you can find it here, or Google for it, this URL. Wils allows you to create some links, hard links, junctions, smart copies, smart clones, smart mirrors, smart moves, splices, multiple sources, and bunch of other stuff I found too confusing to read, frankly. But, it's a brilliant free product that creates a Windows Explorer context menu that allows you right-click on your link target folder then drag it to where you'd like to create the actual link. You can of course rename the link to anything you'd like. I found the same folder on my laptop after installing Vs 2012. I tried renaming that folder to underscore package cache. When I then tried to uninstall Vs 2012 the uninstall process failed to start. More information is available here. For Visual Studio 2017, you can disable the package cache, even after Visual Studio is installed, by calling. I gained about 2 GB of disk space on my system drive from that, nymph. For details, see the docs, Visual Studio docs, disable or remove the package cache. The correct answer seems to be that if you delete it, versus 2012 will fail to uninstall, but it is otherwise not needed. Therefore, you can leave the files there. Everything will work, but it will use lots of disk space. You can delete the files, and if you want to uninstall versus 2012, you can rerun the original installer to put the files back, then uninstall. You can move the files to another drive with more free space and either A. Move the files back when you need them, B. Create a junction as in Flack's suggestion, warning, junctions are tricky beasts, and will light a Windows Explorer telling you the files take up disk space on C, when they are really on another drive. Junctions and symbolic links are the only answer for moving system files to another drive. They are NTFS file system level features that even Windows itself is oblivious to, and thus are a really big hammer and potential security risk that should be used sparingly unlike their Unix slash Linux slash BSD counterparts, since they have been around a lot longer on that OS family and Unix slash Linux slash BSD programs know how to deal with them. If you want to support the channel, please consider subscribing.